So a few things we gotta get to before the video like officially starts. Uh, number one, um, I don't say this enough, but if you're interested in Atlanta basketball, specifically in the professional realm with the Hawks or the Dream, you should subscribe to the channel. I'll just throw that out there, but that's not here there. Uh, the second thing I wanna get to is with all these basketball games going on on Ion or whatever the fuck it's called, this this like random ass channel I've never heard of, um, I, I, I like have my TV like on it or whatever. So like I turn on the TV so I can watch the game and shit and fucking like Law and Order's on and they play like Hawaii Five O and like uh, NCIS and shit. Well, Law and Order was on and I've, 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 I've never watched this shit, but one of the beginning of the episodes was just so fucking fascinating. Like I was, I was, I, I was gonna do something, but the show was on and I was like, okay, what the fuck is this a boot? Long story short, an hour fucking later, oh my god, I'm watching this one goddamn episode. I ain't never been so fucking angry at a fictional show in my entire life. Let this bitch get away with fucking murder. Let this bitch get away with killing her fucking mom because the because 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 the fucking like police people felt bad for the motherfucker. And I'll tell you something, there was a lot of going on. But we're going to talk about white privilege quite a bit in this goddamn video tonight. But I just wanted to start out by saying I will not be watching Law & Order ever again. Fuck them niggas. 19 seasons, my ass. And Ice-T is a terrible actor, but that's not here nor there. Um, I guess we should start out with the fact that um, uh, Ari McDonald is hurt. I, I, I wanted to make a separate video, but I have had a very busy week. I didn't get a chance to. But uh, Ari is hurt. She has a torn leg, like something, something in her shoulder or some shit. I don't know the technical term, and I don't want to say something else that might be in a different place. So uh, she's got something torn in her shoulder, so she's out. So that fucking sucks, obviously. So there's no Ari. There's no Robinson. So both of our legitimate point guards are hurt. Again, I feel like sound the alarm for Kennedy Carter. I feel like sound the alarm for... um. For Destiny Henderson, like if fucking Odyssey Sims is in the league still, like I just, I just, I just feel like at some point, niggas is just like in free agency, just waiting to get back in the league. But you know, cool. We decide to crack the glass on Ryan Howard at point. That was, that was a decision. <laughs> that that was a decision, but that's not even there. So no, Ari. I was assuming. That what was going to happen was that we were going to start Haley Jones. Now, Haley Jones is not a natural point guard, but she 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 runs point. And I think that basketball in 2023 is truly positionless. And if you possess the skills to run the team and, you know, you are a point forward of some kind, you might as well be given the opportunity. She plays that Draymond Green role. She plays that Ben Simmons role, except for the fact that she's not afraid to score and she can shoot and she's got multiple spin moves. But that's not a hint of there. So I figured like at that point, she would just be starting. It was not the fucking case. It was not the fucking case at all. They had Ryan Howard at point guard, which no one on the broadcast seemed to like make a big deal about. They just kind of were like more hyped on like Nas Hillman getting starting minutes, but like no one said, oh, and Ryan Howard's our fucking point guard now. I, again, I, I just, I think it's a little odd the amount of like responsibility we put on Ryan. Not that she's not capable of doing so. Not that statistically she's a much better playmaker than anyone else on the team. I believe last year she had more assists than Ari, but that's not even there. So not that Ryan is not capable of it. It's just very interesting how much we put on her. It's like Kevin Durant, right? Like he's capable of running point, but do, do do you want him to be your point guard? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it was just very interesting. It didn't go as terribly as I thought it would go, but it was a very interesting experiment. I don't understand how you have Alicia Gray right the fuck there, but Ryan's running, I, it's just very questionable, but it was an interesting experiment and it didn't go as bad as I thought it was gonna go, but very, very interesting stuff there. Um, we are out of point guards. They're 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 both fucking hurt. Aries out for a fucking month. Like, we're out of point guards. I just I just I just feel like, you know, y'all 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 keep telling me to let it go, but it's like Kennedy is right the fuck there. 
She's right the fuck there. You know, Destiny Henderson is right the fuck. Like, like just, just, just fucking do it. Like, I, I, I don't, I, I don't understand this shit. We, uh, we, we signed someone named, like, Taylor something, and she played a little bit towards the end of the game. Offensively, she's a fucking bucket. Like, I think she was, like, one for, no, sorry, three for four from three towards the end, and one of them bitches was, like, from half court. I mean, she just pulled that shit, but that's not a hit there. I thought she played incredible. I don't know how she is as far as a playmaker or a ball handler, but as far as the ability to shoot and get your own shot off, my God, looking like superb, but that's not a hint of there. But um, yeah, we're kind of out of point guards. We are kind of out of point guards. So going into the game, and I took a picture of it because I just I just wanted y'all to see this. It was just it was just so interesting just on the matchups alone. We're playing the Liberty, right? We go into this motherfucker, and the starting lineup is you got Sabrina Nescu matched up with Ryan Howard. You got Courtney Vandersloot matched up with Alicia Gray. You got Laney, do not know how to say her first name. You got Laney matched up with Nia Coffey, who's playing amazing. I don't remember where we got her from, but Jesus Christ, is she an unsung hero. Plays incredible all the fucking time, but that's not here there. You have fucking Stewie, fucking Brianna Stewart matched up with Nas Hillman. Year two, Nas Hillman. see how Monique Billings doesn't get to start at that point and I'm I'm I am not on the like I'm 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 not a part of the Monique fan club not that I don't fuck with her but it's just like there's like a very quiet like 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 underrising of support for Monique Billings that I notice and I'm not really a part of that but I I cannot deny the impact she has and I just feel like wouldn't this be the time to crack the glass on the vet? Especially when like Nas had like four fouls in the first half and was basically unplayable because of those fouls. You ended up having um you ended up having Haley Jones play anyway and in 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 place of her in the starting lineup. I felt like Monique Billings played really well against Stewie too. Like I I didn't I didn't get that, but that's now here, that wouldn't be the first time I've 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 found question and concern with the lineups from Coach Wright, but that's not even there. Then you got Cheyenne Parker against John Quell Jones. The only two matchups I see here where I say it would probably be fine is Cheyenne Parker on John Quell Jones and Alicia Gray on Courtney Vandersloot. Everything else, I'm like, are you sure we want to do that? And again, just 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 to be clear, I am not slandering Ryan Howard. I just I just don't know if you want Ryan on Sabrina and vice versa. I don't I don't know if that's the way you want to go about that, but that's neither here nor there. So I was kind of looking at this like, yeah, I don't know how this is going to go. But the only thing that really backfired here is Nas on Brianna Stewart. But I think we all kind of saw that from a fucking mile away. What ended up happening was we got obliterated, but there were multiple times where it was very competitive and I felt like everyone was playing really fucking well, right? But then there were times where we're just getting blown the fuck off our own home court and it's like a damn near 40 point lead. I mean, there were times where it looks great and there's times where it looks fucking terrible. And it kind of goes back to the same general thing we've been discussing for basically this entire homestand is it's nice that the team has fight. It's nice that the team has energy and hustle and grit and all that shit, but it's just, you, 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 you cannot... You cannot expect to win, especially against the good-ass teams like fucking Brooklyn. You can't expect to win those types of games off of just the vibes, right? The vibes don't win you games. Sometimes they do, maybe against like trash can teams or whatever, but the vibes don't win you games. And I feel like there are a lot of times, this game included, where I feel like we're running off the fumes of vibes. And that is that is not how you play basketball. I, I, I don't I don't consider myself a basketball aficionado. Um, I don't even think I could coach, but I, I just I'm pretty sure that's just not how basketball works. What I'm referring to is on the defensive side, the hustle and the grit and all that shit is cool, right? Like I'm here for it. Just find the right matchups, get the right coverage. It is what it is. But even on the defensive side, when you have times where AD is getting fucking cooked by Sabrina Nescu, I mean, like 90% of the time, that's the matchup. And they seem to be playing man on, right? Like, 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 
Like, man, oh man, like, there's no fucking switching going on. There are multiple times where poor AD is out there just getting sauced the fuck up. And again, this is Sabrina Anescu. We're not talking about some, you know, just, 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 just cool guard who's out there who like does her job. This is fucking Sabrina Anescu. Our opinions on her aside, that motherfucker's talented as shit. And just watching AD get cooked time after time was kind of painful to watch. I just feel like as the coach, you would look at this matchup and say, well, this shit ain't working. Let's try something else. Or maybe find a way to hide AD defensively, like how they hide Sabrina Nescu defensively. And I just feel like the concept of that is not new to the coaching world in 2023. But again, that's the defensive side. Let's talk offensively. And I'm not going to say anything that I haven't already said before. The only difference is I'm not yelling and screaming about it. I might be talking in an elevated voice, but that's because I tend to project by voice. So the niggas in the back can hear me, but that's not even there. But the only difference is I'm not angry about it because I've just come to expect this type of shit. Offensively, you just, you, you just, you just, you got to draw a play. You, 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 you have to at some point draw a fucking play. I think it's great that Alicia Gray can get a shot in a fucking phone booth. I think that's great. I think it's awesome that she's coming into her own again and she's getting really comfortable in our system, if you want to call it that. But ISO plays for whoever is hot at the moment is, is, is not, is not coaching. That's, that's not, that's not coaching. And again, ISO is such a loose term I, I i i i i really only call it a play because i'm not sure what else to call it you know iso is just it's really just give a nigga the ball and get the fuck out the way and that's that is not a play i understand that they just kind of play off the vibe of the game and you just take what the defense is giving you but when Cheyenne Parker is like fucking unstoppable down low and even jean Quell Jones' aggressive ass can't do shit about it, a, 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 a transition step back three from Cheyenne Parker cannot be, cannot be under the category of green light. There, there, there is no way on God's alleged green earth that you can you can you can say to yourself that something like that is okay. <coughs> something else. And I guess it doesn't really matter because they don't run anything, but with no real point guard out there for a good bit of the game, it's just kind of Ryan. We kind of miss those moments of Aerie dumping the ball down to the post to let post players go eat. We didn't really see a lot of that, which was missed. Now, I've said multiple times that there are multiple facets of Aerie's game that she's missing, but one of the things that she consistently gets right is she gets post players active, and we've got the bully power to be effective down there, but when she's not out there, it's it's it's... It's even, which is saying a lot, but it's even worse. I mean, we really need someone out there that's going to, like, run the fucking team. Like, we really, really got to get this addressed. And I understand both of our goddamn point guards are gone now. But we got to figure this shit out. I think as far as, you know, rim protection and general defense and shit like that, I feel like that's covered. I think their defense is good enough. I feel like it's decent enough. Cheyenne Parker is just so fucking good on both sides of the floor. I don't really think we need more help in that department. I mean, we're not the biggest team, but we're physical enough to handle ourselves and the situation will handle itself. I mean, when nights like last night where the refs swallow their whistle and they just let the Liberty literally just beat the fuck out of us for 40 minutes and they don't call anything. It's very encouraging to see that the dream are able to battle their way back and make shit competitive. But it's like, it's like the team doesn't understand. And I don't know if this is the team or the coaching staff or where to point the finger at at this point, but it's like, there's not an understanding 
that the same team ball you used to close the gap is the same team ball you need to use to finish the game. You know? When you close the gap and it's tied or it's six points or something like that, that 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 that's not really the time for half court threes. You know what I mean? Like like that's 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 not really the time for hero ball and ISOs and shit like that. That's that's when you really like dig your heels in the dirt and stay disciplined to the game plan or lack thereof, but stay stay committed to what's been working and you just do that until it doesn't fucking work especially since there's clearly no game plan or no other options to be run you just keep doing what you're doing and have faith that that makeshift system is going to win you the game i mean if it was good enough to tie or get the game close i mean com common sense would say just keep doing it until they figure it out you know the same way teams just kind of attack us the same way and we never really seem to recover. Like, I feel like you could do the same thing on the other end. And again, nothing I'm saying is revolutionary. Nothing I'm saying is like some like X's and O's like type scheme that like only I know that I need to be on the coaching staff for. I feel like a lot of this shit is common sense. And again, the hustle is there. The grit is there. I could go up and down the roster and everyone's playing amazing. I just feel like there's a lack of cohesion and there's a lack of structure that if we could just tighten that up, we're probably winning these games. We were really close to beating the Aces. And at certain times in the game, it was looking like we were probably going to beat the Liberty. That is as, that's as good as the competition is going to get. And I feel like these are encouraging signs. I think it's just time... For someone on the roster to just step up and say, fuck it, I'm going to sacrifice whatever my objective is or whatever my plans are or my goals are, and I'm going to simply be the glue that holds this team together. I think that person could be Alicia Gray. I don't think it is fair to expect Ryan to not only be offensively brilliant, defensively active, and be able to run the team at the same goddamn time. I think we are just asking way too fucking much. And again, not that she's not capable of it. It's just, I don't feel like it's fucking fair. And I feel like, why else did you bring in Alicia Gray if not for these moments? Offensively, it's great that she's stepping up. Defensively, it's great that she steps up. But I think it's time to take that next step especially with no Airy, no Robinson. And I mean, you bring niggas in, but then you like wave them the next game. So who knows how long people are going to be here for that you're bringing in. If you're not going to go get another point guard, you know, a proven household name, I just, I just feel like just give the ball to Alicia and see what the fuck happens. And again, not that she will carry us offensively, but let her be the decision maker. And again, I just want to make it clear because I know there's a section of the audience that thinks I am shitting on Ryan, and that is not the case. I just think Ryan has a clear role. Like she's our generational talent that we're building around to make her life easy so she can just focus on being the best her possible. I think asking her to be basically KD and Chris Paul at this like but like we want her to fucking be LeBron and I just I just feel like that's just asking so much of her not that she's not capable but I don't think that that should even have to be the case not when you have the talent around her to make up for this shit because I'm telling you it's just a matter of like tightening some screws just a different change of mentality I don't think it's a trade the whole team situation hell you don't even have to get rid of coach right I just I just I just think it is a situation of just 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 just, just tighten this shit up and maybe through experience of losses like this they will naturally progress to that maybe Ryan just like naturally says Fuck it, I am a god, and just and just and just handles everything, right? And you just have a dope supporting cast around her, but sh all this shit just runs through her. Who knows? Maybe that's what she develops into. Maybe she adapts to this situation, and she's just on god mode, right? 
Maybe Alicia Gray takes that step on some Tejante Murray, Trey Young type shit. Like, Trey, you keep shooting from half court. I'll run the fucking team until you hit one of them bitches. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't I don't know. Maybe that's some other third person. Maybe Cheyenne Parker becomes a point forward or some shit like that. Maybe maybe this is Haley Jones moment or something like that. You know what? Who fucking knows? Maybe AD turns into like some amazing point guard or some shit like that. You know what I mean? It could it could it could be anything. But here's to hoping that they naturally develop some something to 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 tighten the screws and get this shit together. Because the team looks great at times. There are times where we really look shitty, but there are times when the team really looks great. And I think it's just a matter of that one switch that gets flipped or something clicks or whatever it is. I just hope it happens soon because it would be a goddamn shame. It would be a goddamn shame if we go out like the Mercury. Speaking of the Mercury, shout out to BG. There's a lot of things I, 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 I cannot speak on because, you know, it's just it's just not my place. But man, man, oh, man, shout out BG. That, that is about all I can say, but that's not even there. But yeah, I have confidence in this team. I don't I don't I don't think it's the end of the world. I just think we just need that one more click of something. And it can come from a lot of different places. I just hope it happens soon. It would be a shame if we just wasted another season. But that's not here there. Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, sorry for another late upload. I just Again, my personal life is just in fucking shambles. I'm trying to get my shit together. But that's not here there. So I will see y'all next game. Whoever the fuck it is we play. Whenever the fuck it is we play again. And I'll get on here and i give you another breakdown. I'm Sever the Bond. You're on Hoodie Fish. Yeah. <laughs>